everybody. Syntax 77 here. Sorry to be so dramatic, but I got a piece of gear I really want to share with you guys today. This is a piece of gear that I recently got. It was actually sent to me by a viewer that's apparently a uh, proponent of the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. And what this is, <laughs> I've never used before. Didn't even really realize it existed. It is a fuelless USB rechargeable lighter, for lack of a better term. Fire starter, if you will. What I'm gonna to try to do today out here in this wonderful outdoors landscape is light a fire using just this USB powered uh, fire starter. So let's check it out. Now, what exactly are these things? Myself, I'm not a smoker, but a quick search online shows that there's a bunch of these out there, so they can at least light a cigarette, one would assume, and what it basically is, is two Tesla coils, kind of, with an electrical arc in between the two coils that are impervious to wind, or so the literature says. This should theoretically give us the ability in the most dire situation to light some tinder, shavings of wood, pocket lint, etc., which we're gonna test later. Now, Tesla coil itself would be a reference to Nicholas Tesla, or, well, pardon me, my wife being a ballerina of Polish descent, I should properly say that, Nikola Tesla, who would be, well, you should look him up. He's a pretty interesting figure. He did a lot of weird work with electricity. There's some crazy, conspiracy theories about him, but most noticeably you'll see photos of him with these Tesla coils where he's arcing electricity between two giant coils. Now the conspiracy theory amongst others is that, well, there was a giant burst in Siberia that wiped out a ton of land and trees. It looked like a nuclear explosion, but this was before the nuclear era after World War II. Anyway, you can check that out. The point is we're gonna use this electrical arc system here to try to light some fires. Like I said, there's a lot of these out there. Most of them seem to be just for lighting cigarettes, etc. But this one in particular is made by Techfire and it's a little more outdoor worthy, I'd say, or at least oriented because it does have this flip open top that would protect it from water. It will not, from what the literature says that came with it, it won't ignite or uh, engage, if you will, when the lid is closed and it has a 10 second timeout. So if it was somewhere open and the button was pressed down, it wouldn't just keep uh, engaging electricity. So that's cool. And then of course the safety orange color. So if you drop it in the woods, a little more likely to see it, right? So let's check it out. Now, first things first, I got a variety of things to try to light. Let's go up from easiest to most challenging. So we'll end with just straight up tinder. I have a knife to shave some wood shavings. And uh, we'll start with some other items, shall we? We've got some very wet ground. This is actually our first day without precipitation in a while. So I'm quite comfortable doing this test, but let's just get the brush out of the way. You see, we got some sprouts here too. Winter will be over, at least according to the calendar, in a couple weeks. So we got a little bit of sprout action. That's cool. You can see there is a power button right there and when I press it you see that little beam there I think yeah I think it's picking it up on the camera right there we go let's get a little closer there it is it makes a little arc is it impervious to wind well there's wind coming right from where my thumb is here on the left of the screen and yeah it's not affecting it At least not much. It's hard to tell if that's actually the wind affecting it. Physics, who knows, right? But we got an arc there. So that's 
basically the premise of the system. A high energy electrical arc going across those two contact points and uh, it's supposed to light stuff on fire. Let's see. Got my stuff sack full of goodies here. What do we got to try out here and do some testing on? First things first, not too challenging, but let's just see, will it light a tea candle? Pretty basic stuff, so let's see what happens. Press the power button. Put that arc right on there. It's smoking. It's getting there. Oh, there we go. I got a little wind coming from my left, but it's lit. All right, success. So we know it can do that. All right, next phase. Let's step it up a little bit more. Pretty standard fare right here. You can get this about $5 at any sporting goods store. It is a block of magnesium along with a rod. Uh, you would call it a flint or a ferro rod. And uh, that makes sparks, magnesium, flammable solid, if you will. And if we scrape it into a pile, we should be able to ignite it. But can we do it? with this here Tesla coil lighter. Let's make this nice and organized. Got a little piece of aluminum flashing there that I used to make my windscreens out of. I just buy it in bulk. And I need a knife or something sharp to scrape the magnesium. The cool thing about this stuff is moisture doesn't matter. This thing, you could literally take it right out of the ocean or a lake, doesn't matter. Let's see if we can ignite it just by itself. Now. Ideally, you'd put a little tinder with it and just get it all going at once. But let's just see what happens. Tesla arc right up to it. It lights it, but there's nothing to continue the burn. Now, in real life, you could mix this with your wood tinder instead of doing this and dramatically improve your chances of getting a fire going. But let's switch to just straight up wood shavings and see what happens. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's test one more thing. Let's say you had some wet fire. Uh, a little easier than wood tinder, right? Let's uh, try this, but let's make it interesting. It's called wet fire. Uh, can you do it wet? So inside here is a little tablet. There we go. And I've lit the whole cube on fire before, but you can just shave off some pieces. Probably an eighth of a cube. Get my canteen, pour it right on top so it's actually saturated. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, I didn't think of that, huh? It's washing it away. That's about as wet as it gets. Now, this is more of a testament to the wet fire stuff than it is to the Tesla coil, but come on. It's smoking. I'm kind of burying this in the ground. I'm probably not supposed to. Yep, I'm getting, <laughs> getting mud all over this fancy thing. But hey, if you can't do that, what can you do? It's fighting. I see a flame. There you go. Wet fire is lit. So I could be basically, I would assume, just sitting in a rainstorm with this and the wet fire and I'm gonna get going. So that is a good sign. And of course I would feed that right now with tinder, but instead I'm gonna blow it out, scrape this all away, start fresh, and make sure all that is out of the way for the next test. We're just gonna do straight up wood tinder. Now we need to make some, of course. So I got this here hatchet. Also courtesy of Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, uh, made by Browning. And we'll make some wood shavings and see if we can't get something lit here. All right, so, got some thin wood shavings there. Trying my best to deal with this soft dirt here. And I also have some stuff like this, which hopefully will be awesome. And the sun's coming out, which is nice. It feels good. These chunks here are probably a little big for actual first stage fire starting, but let's just see what happens. Let's see if I can just light one of these up by itself. The most awkward thing is getting it in between the elements, but just hold it. Remember after 10 seconds, this will time out. For safety so just keep that in mind if it goes out all you got to do is let go and hold it again it's smoldering but not quite there and what i really could do so i feel like if i was persistent enough i could get this going a matter of fact look 
I'm about to. It timed out. There it is. I got it. Right there. And that was with some large chunks. Now, if it was really giving me problems, I could take this stuff here, put it on top, which may catch right now anyway. But I can definitely get that stuff lit. Put this tinder with this really thin straw right up to it. And I seem to be, even though I got a bunch of wind going on right now, I'll just cup it from the wind. I'll light that piece of wood with this grass right behind it. And I'm pretty confident this is about to go up. Oh man, and of course the wind is really kicking up right now. Come on. A very um, localized flame, for lack of a better term, but it is powerful. I mean, this is worst case scenario, it's very wet here right now. I think the snow melted off of this area not too long ago. So I suppose what I have to get used to is a lighter by function, the flame comes out, it spreads out and engulfs the area. This, it has this very specific pinching spot, which is where the arcs come together. That's where the flame is. With a lighter, you would not just light right here, but it would blow through the whole thing. With this, it's only really affecting what's right in between it. And also, uh-oh, it appears to have died. Hmm, that's a shame. All right, well, flash forward to the future, a week in the future actually, and here I am back in the comforts of my home. Now, the reason it's been a week was I was out there in the woods testing this. Obviously it stopped working and then things got busy. I prepared for a trip, went on a trip, a snow camping trip with my friend Mike, which the video will be hopefully out relatively soon. And that actually, however, gave me a good opportunity to test this further. I should also probably point out, I didn't mention this when I was out in the field, but this rope here, according to the literature that came with it, you could actually use this as a fire starting aid as well as tinder. There's apparently a core in there that's even more flammable than the rope itself. It's like a red core. So if you just take a little piece of this, cut it off, you can use this in a pinch if there's no finer tinder around. So I hadn't thought to do that in the field. Maybe I would have gotten around to testing it if it hadn't died first, but that's something to keep in mind. And you know, honestly, it's not the end of the world that it died before I got a fire going because to be honest, I was in an area where let's just say I didn't really anticipate trying to have a real full-fledged fire. I was really just trying to theoretically test this. Just playing around trying to get different things lit. I ended up burning the battery out. I would say you get about 10 minutes of constant. Now again, it locks out after 10 seconds, but 10 minutes of using this a whole lot, which may not seem like a lot at first, but it really is um, if you're doing things correctly and you know what you're doing and you have better Tinder. That's a lot of opportunities. So I took it home, I recharged it, came back to life. I said, I'll take it on this snow camping trip with my friend Mike. And we were up there and we also had lighters and matches and whatnot. Now for me, I had a new lighter. Where'd it go? Here we go. I picked this up for like six bucks. It's a refillable butane lighter, jet style. It's a little heavier because it's metal and it's working fine now. But I even had this in my pocket, busted it out, did not work for me. So I said, fine. I started using matches and I was getting by on that. So I didn't really think of this until later when my friend Mike, who was carrying a mini Bic like this, he had it in his pocket as well and it worked for a little bit. But because of the ambient air temperature it was, I should point out, uh, below zero on this trip, it conked out on him. It was just too cold for him to use as well. So I went and got this. He was trying to actually light one of those same wet fire fire starters that I was using earlier. Now I had actually, it popped in my head, an advantage of this would be because I just mentioned how those butane lighters die in cold temps. I was like, that won't affect this. This will be great. And sure enough, here's my opportunity to test it, right? Well, I went and I got it out of my bag and I pressed the button. You can see it's working now, but that didn't happen. It didn't react at all. Again, it was below zero, but just to let you know, it didn't turn on at all. So I was thinking, wow, it's so cold that like the first ignition just totally torched the battery. So I went ahead and just switched over to 
matches once again and we got that fire started what i found out when i got home was once it warmed up and i was back here i didn't recharge it first i pressed it and it came back to life it was working perfect again so it wasn't that the battery got killed really quick it's just that literally it it couldn't function in those temps once it warmed back up it was fine so that means that on future trips when it's cold i could bring this i would just have to make sure to keep it in a pocket and keep it warm i'm assuming then maybe it would work i don't know how long it would take for it to cool back down but that kind of puts it on par with the lighter because both of these butane lighter or this you'd have to worry about keeping warm in your pocket so that didn't end up really being an advantage at least not on a sub-zero trip but just something to look out for there is another thing that i didn't test out in the field and show you how about using this if you just want some sort of means that will light up a canister stove well let's see how that'll work i have a feeling it will but let's see try to do this with one hand here there you go no problem so if you want it for just lighting up upright stoves like this or any type of stove where you can light it from the top you don't have to suck it in through the side you should be good to go with this guy so that's good to know <sighs> so final thoughts on this well i don't know if i'd call it final thoughts i'm really just starting to play with it and figure out its uses and advantages over other lighting systems and maybe some of you guys and gals out there can chime in and let me know if you have any experiences with this or maybe you haven't even used one yet but you can think of a reason that this would be uh, a lot more advantageous than some of these other items lighters matches striker which i haven't mentioned oops of course these are handy i always carry one of these but this isn't a sustained hot spot like this is or a lighter but that is good for getting stoves and uh fire starters lit tinder etc so yeah i think that kind of covers it that's where i'm at with my experimentation with this the tech fire uh usb fuelless lighter or whatever you want to call it yeah it does work but it also does have its pros and cons just like a lot of things in fire starting and well life in general right so if you have any little uh tips or advice for me or i don't know let me know is this thing worth carrying would you not even mess with it are you just sticking with matches lighters etc let me know also a little heads up totally unrelated to this fire starter here but eh, might as well mention it now because i think it'll be coming up soon i've had some people ask before if i ever had any plans for say syntax 77 t-shirts particularly maybe something that references oh i don't know flame broil goodness at the end of a hike that will be coming up soon so stay tuned for that i do believe we're going to have some t-shirts coming out i'm just working out the details of that but there will hopefully be a video coming up soon so keep that in mind if you've ever been interested in some sweet syntax 77 apparel so yeah that's it in terms of news for the channel and fire starting testing till next time i'm syntax 77 and you have fun out there